More than two years have passed since Russia launched its full-scale invasion of Ukraine. During this time, the Russian army has killed over 31,000 Ukrainian soldiers and wounded many more. Hundreds of thousands of the civilian population have been injured and killed. The Russian army systematically commits crimes against the civilian population, bombing civilian infrastructure, using sexual violence as a weapon against women, men and children, and using various forms of physical and psychological torture against civilians and prisoners of war. It abducted over 20,000 Ukrainian children and promoted a state program for children's Russification. The Russian invasion has caused the displacement of over 10 million, mostly women and children. Approximately 4 million are internally displaced and over 6 million have become refugees. Many Ukrainian women refugees have become victims of human trafficking. At the same time, the resistance of the Ukrainian people has been heroic. Ukrainian women have been an active part of the resistance both in the armed forces and in various other invaluable capacities, such as healthcare, education, volunteering, communications with social media as writers, leaders and spokeswomen. We asked Ukrainian feminists to speak on why the struggle against Russia's imperialist invasion is not only about Ukraine and why it's also about the future of humanity and should matter to the whole world. In order to understand the motivations behind a Russian aggression towards Ukraine and towards other countries, we must examine the power dynamics between the state, the economic actors and the society inside Russia uh, for at least the past uh, 20 years. Russia always wanted to control Ukraine. Since times of Moscovia and the Zaporozhian siege, it never wanted Ukrainians to be independent. It banned our language many times, it appropriated our culture, it stole our history and art. Even the Soviet Union wasn't a true union for us. It was an occupation, as it was for other Soviet republics. After the revolution of dignity in 2014, Ukrainians made a strong decision to align themselves with uh, European democratic countries and to step away from Russian influence, finally. But... Of course, Moscow didn't want us to be free and to lose its influence because without a conquered Ukraine, the entire Russian national myth would collapse. Today, Russia is trying to restore its former greatness and create a new great empire within the borders of the entire Eurasian continent. Given the strategic goal of the Kremlin, its effort to absorb Ukraine as its cornerstone, linchpin in Putin's strategy for you, was only a matter of time. Putin was sure that the war would be lightened first, and uh, he was preparing to declare himself as uh, another uh, collector of uh, Russian lands, and celebrate the 100-year anniversary of the creation of the USSR by the announcement of the return uh, of the Great Russia. We choose democracy, human rights, and equal freedom for each person in our society. We too close for Russia population. To good result can be bad examples like Putin think, for huge 140 million Russian population. That's why Putin fight with our choice to be a democracy society. The prison military and humanitarian aid leads to an increase of number of victims. A small amount of ammunition doesn't make it possible to close Ukrainian sky and our cities and villages become simply targets for Russian missiles. Uh, the Russians are shooting us while the world debate whether to help. Of course, Ukrainians will keep resisting no matter what, but the lack of support means more people are gonna die and suffer. 
Ukrainians have been resisting in many different ways, by building volunteer networks and providing our defenders with all the necessities, by protecting our land and people uh, on the front line, through huge and creative fundraisers, high quality journalism in many different languages, and uh, effective communications. Mm, Ukrainians have resisted because we don't have any other choice. And Ukrainian citizens participated in popular movements against these autocrats. And in the process, they were self-identifying themselves as a part of a community opposed to Russia, because Russia was constantly putting into power in Ukraine people who were stealing their wealth and who were killing those who tried to oppose, oppose their politics. When Putin was planning to take Kyiv in three days, uh, well, he forgot to take into account one small detail, that Ukraine is not populated by Ukrainians from his imagination. Uh, in fact, his imagination is very primordialist and essentialist nationalist imagination. In fact, Putin, as any other ethno-nationalist, is convinced that nation is a real thing. It's a given fact. Uh, if Russian historians say that in the 13th century, in medieval Rus state, there was a Russian nation and Ukrainians were part of it, then Ukrainians are Russian, they just forgot it. Uh, if Russian linguists say that Ukrainian language is a dialect of Russian, then Ukrainians speak Russian, actually. They just do not know that it is Russian. They think that it is Ukrainian, etc., etc. So this is an imagina ethno-nationalist imagination where nation is a given fact, a nature, and if Ukrainians were Russians in the past, they are and will always be Russians. You just need to destroy their false Ukrainian consciousness and reveal their real, authentic Russian self. So this is basically the ethno-nationalist uh, vision that Putin has about Ukrainians. At the beginning of the war in Russia, an article by Timofey Sergeyev uh, with telling title What Russia Should Do with Ukraine was published, which consistently outlined plans for the future genocide of Ukrainians. The physical destruction, re-education, ideological repressions. And even now, while the war continues, Russia is committed genocide both in the occupied territories and throughout Ukraine, striking vital infrastructure such as energy facilities in winter. From 24 February 2022, you know, full-scale aggression um, started. What that means for Ukraine society? For Ukraine society, that was main signal that we need to use our skills during skill, skills of really realized our human rights like freedom of speech, free, freedom of association, freedom of peaceful demonstration to protect us, to defend our country and to help our army fight. Main idea of Ukraine that each person same value, each person need to have possibility realize themselves in their lives and be quite good and quite bright member of Ukrainian society. That's why fighting against Putin for us is fighting for equal rights, women power and absolutely possibility realize human rights for anyone. Lots of love and dignity. Our soldiers are not just warriors. They are our loved ones, torn from their life by the war. They are our sons and daughters, sisters and brothers, mothers, fathers, friends, and we appreciate and support them. It's our deep empathy and the highest value placed on every life. We care about everyone, from children to elders, regardless of status, gender or nationality. Even pets and animals are important to us. Each Ukrainian life is precious. 
Every time when residential building got, gets hit by Russian missiles and somebody got killed in their home, the whole country mourns and hurts like a family, even if these people live hundreds of kilometers apart. This is why we prioritize to protect our people and then our land. This is why we need to deoccupy all our territories, because we need to save our people. Uh, Ukrainians resist um, because they want to survive. And it is especially understandable when we see what happens to people under occupation where civilians are raped and murdered in a totally random way. And what is important to understand for people outside uh, Ukraine uh, is that Ukrainians, when they are defending their right to exist, they are also objectively defending the project of a future where the change is possible. Uh, they are defending a society where you can be a citizen with rights uh, rather than a serf without any right. One of the two commit war crimes by Russia army here is sexual and gender-based violence. That's why exactly inside, exactly inside the Russian society decriminalized home violence. That's why at Russian society traditional values speak about only one function for women to bring new soldiers at this life. At Ukraine you have absolutely other situation. Human rights defenders, half of us, it's women. More than 40,000 people at the front line, it's a women. From 2015, we don't have any list of banded profession which was produced by Soviet Union. More than 300 professions started to be open for any person, women or men, who wanna use it. Before that, they was banded for women. The daily routine of our women has changed. Life shifted to bomb shelters, and self-defense, survival without water, light, and heat uh, became vital skills. Today, Russia cancels all the rights of Ukrainian women, the right to be a woman, to have a home, a family, a profession, even just to live. Ukraine's enemy is a fascist patriarchal state that uses sexual violence as a weapon. Tens of thousands of Ukrainian women were sexually assaulted by Russian soldiers while under occupation or in captivity. They were objectified, dehumanized and demoralized. At the same time, Ukrainian women fight side by side with men on the front line. They volunteer, they raise children and keep household on their own. We are fighting for our right to move toward a more progressive and fair society. Putin is aligning politicians who wouldn't mind to destroy the remaining international mechanisms. So this would be actually a wonderful world for the far-right dictators. But I think it would be a real hell for ordinary workers and even more for women, for women and for any type of um, oppressed minorities. And this is why the solidarity with Ukraine, it's not just a moral stance. I think it is a rational response for anybody who is concerned with our common future where emancipation is possible. So this is why Ukraine's resistance is also a feminist struggle. Putin's actions are being watched in other countries. And the success of the Kremlin dictator can be inspiring for those who'd like to assert their power over people in other countries. The women of China and Iran might be the first to feel the negative consequences of Putin's success. However, European and American women are also uh, not safe from possible risks and attempts to return the past may lead 
to the return of the former dependent state of women, starting with the impossibility for them to manage their own uh, bodies and ending with uh, auxiliary roles in society. And contrary, Ukraine's victory will become a victory for feminism. The important thing to understand is that this aggression was made possible by impunity. Uh, Russia has already committed crimes of aggression and war crimes in Chechnya, in Ukraine, in Syria and in a number of uh, African states. These crimes have not uh, been considered important enough uh, to stop, for example, trading with Russia. Business as usual with dictators and war criminals was and still uh, presented as something legitimate. Uh, we separate politics and business, right? Uh, so, and this is hiding the political consequences of such cynic cynical uh, economic logic. The Russian war is continuing mainly because we pay Putin's bills. We are buying Russian fossil fuels, we are consuming them, uh, we are contributing to the economic growth in our societies, hoping that the war in Ukraine and the climate crisis would somehow resolve themselves. They will disappear by miracle. Unfortunately, they will not disappear unless we take consciousness of our collective responsibility and also of our capacity to act uh, collectively. In fact, there are uh, many ways to help Ukrainians and uh, to support Ukrainian resistance. First of all, uh, to remain people devoted to, uh, to the ideas of freedom and law. Because the war from the Ukrainian side, from the Ukrainian perspective, is precisely for this. It is also important to motivate uh, state authorities to continue uh, helping Ukraine. Secondly, listen to Ukrainians. Try to learn more about Ukrainian history, Ukrainian culture, Ukrainian language, because this knowledge uh, can add to the understanding of this war and remove possible illusions uh, how to terminate it. Next, uh, humanitarian aid uh, to Ukrainians through various volunteer initiatives and donations. Uh, the fourth, support of cultural and uh, scientific development uh, through the implementations of joint and uh, individual projects. A separate direction is assistance to Ukrainian refugees. After all, in order to resist, we have to save people. At the beginning of the full-scale invasion, I got a letter from a Canadian feminist activist. She asked me to support her pacifist campaign to stop providing Ukraine with weapons. I asked whether she spoke to Ukrainian women and whether she asked their opinion. She never did. She also refused to hear me out. Me as a Ukrainian woman who actually knew what horrors uh, women in Ukraine would face if we couldn't protect ourselves from perpetrators. Uh, please keep listening to Ukrainian voices, especially those of women. We're fighting for democratic values, equality, freedom and human rights. And we need you to stand by our back. I believe that the real power goes together with cooperation and solidarity. Vote for politicians who have consistently supported Ukraine, uh, keep donating to Ukrainian charities and volunteers. Be ambassadors and supporters of Ukraine in your local communities. Stand with Ukraine until we win. When asked why I think it's important to support Ukraine, I remind people that the fight against interlocking oppression must be understood regionally as well as globally. For instance, on February 17th of 2022, Brittany Griner was arrested in Russia. On February 24th, Russia's planned invasion of Ukraine occurred. These are not independent events. Racism and sexism are forces within interlocking oppressive systems 
which must be fought everywhere. Trump's 2016 campaign of disinformation has continued to target the U.S. electorate and so chaos among supporters of democratic rule. Thus, the goal of incarceration of Griner was not only to shame the U.S. government, but to rebuke the very idea of democracy, of civil rights and freedom and equality that independent Ukrainian people sought. The assault on women around the world from Masa Amir land and others is an attempt to silence the legitimate voices of dissent, especially within autocratic regimes. Our struggle is to free all human beings from interlocking with Western wherever they would be. The Iranian government is an ally of Putin and a major provider of the drones and missiles that Russia uses to destroy Ukrainian infrastructure and to kill its civilians. But I want people to know that the majority of the people of Iran oppose this alliance with Russian imperialism. On March 1st, 2022, a few days after Russia launched its full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Nasrina Sotudeh, a prominent Iranian feminist human rights attorney, wrote an open letter to the Secretary General of the United Nations to condemn the invasion and to declare her solidarity with Ukrainians. She wrote, quote, in the past few days, the world has witnessed Russia's military invasion of Ukraine, a country which declared its independence 30 years ago in accordance with all the rules of international law. Ukraine has stood up to this rape with an impressive resistance. They do not want to be quietly crushed under the boots of the invaders. This itself is a call to the world to come to their aid. As a woman who has lived in a country that was involved in a direct war for eight years, I can imagine the terror of war and naked brutality against innocent human beings. I share your horror at this blatant act of rape. This war is a battle between democracy and dictatorship. But fortunately, the people of Ukraine are not alone in this battle. The world has come to their aid with a great deal of concern. In solidarity with the people of Ukraine and standing by them, I say that world peace is not possible without standing up to Russia's invasion of Ukraine and without support for Ukraine. Hoping for an end to all wars, Nasrina Sotudeh, Tehran, Iran, March 1st, 2022.